Hello, everybody. My name is Tiffany. I'm the Tipsy Artist. And today we are going live to teach you how to paint this adorable little pickup truck. And it is just in time for Valentine's Day since we have a tendency to start every season two months early in all of our decor. So we're already getting ready for Valentine's Day. If you don't believe me, go into Hobby Lobby and you'll see it for yourself. So it's kind of crazy out there. Lots of Valentine's stuff happening. So, um, and this is a fun thing because I think hearts can be all year round. Um, so we've got a really cute little template here for you, traceable. So your kit comes with the transfer paper and the line art. So all you have to do is trace it all out and we make it super easy for y'all. We give you all the supplies that you need. And then I've gone ahead and I've traced out all of my line work so you can see basically how you'll also start this whole process. And it looks kind of like a, a graphite pencil line to begin with, but then your kit comes with this permanent marker. So then I do a hard line over everything. Hello. <laughs> and hi to everybody out there joining me today. And you know what? It's a, it's a new year. Happy new year to everybody. I almost forgot to say that. So it is 2021. Yay. We're all very excited about that. It's a relief that 2020 is over and now it is 2021. That's kind of crazy. So yes. So welcome everybody. And I hope you, uh, for those of you who are receiving them, I hope you got your stimulus checks in. That's also a big, let's pray for those to come in. So yes. All right. Um, so let's see here. I'm going to put on my little peepers here and get this going. All right. So I've got all the line work done and then yes. Yay. <laughs> all right. So um, paint. All right. So we have our paint nearby and our brushes nearby, water, paint plates. Uh, and again, Paint Kit has everything that you need, tipsyartist.com. If you do want to paint this with me, we keep the recording up forever. So you can always come back and watch this again and, you know, do all this with me. All right. One other thing I do want to say, though, real quick, uh, before I start to paint, is all of this, I went ahead and did a hard line through. Because I'm going live, I do have to work pretty quickly. And so... Basically, I have to just go ahead and do all, just everything. I have to lay it out all in the beginning. Now, the permanent marker does bleed through so that I can go back over and do it all again. But if you would rather just do a nice wash of all your background paint first, let that set up and dry, then you can take that same transfer paper and line work, and then you can place that over the top. That way you're not having to redo all of your lettering over the top again. So that's a really nice tip. So again, all this background color that I'm about to place on, you can do that first and then do your transfer paper and line art over the top. So that's up to you, or you can just do it exactly like I do it too. But you will have to, you'll see how I have to kind of do all this lettering again, which is okay. It gives you more practice. That's fun. And happy new year. Oh, David. <laughs> I hope you're, um, did you eat your black eyed peas? We'll see. We don't even have any in the house. So we're in trouble. We need some good luck. We need to go get some black eyed peas. Maybe we'll go out to a restaurant or something later and just get black eyed peas or something. All right. So here we go. I'm actually going to start with a really big flat tack on brush and I'm going to add a little bit of water here. My canvas is flat, as you can see, which I highly recommend for beginners. That way you don't have to worry about any water runs. So I think that's that definitely helps you out a lot. And then I'm going to go ahead and push into a lot of white paint here to begin with. And then a tiny little amount of black. So I'm going to make this really pretty light gray. And then the other thing I want to add in here is a little bit of a cream color that will come through. So we'll need to mix up a little bit of that. So here we go. We've got some primary yellow. There it is. Oh, cool. Somebody did a baby Yoda with me. Yeah, I do too. The baby Yoda. You can actually, that can be kind of like for Valentine's Day. You can have a little heart to it. Um, okay, so I've got a little bit of some primary yellow, a little bit of white. Let's mix those two together and we're gonna make a really light. So I've still got a lot of that really pretty light gray on my brush. 
So then I'm just going to barely push into that primary yellow. So that gives me a really like, almost like an antique white look. And there's one other thing I'm going to show, show you how to mix up here. So we're going to make a little bit of some brown. So let's use some cadmium orange. And then also we've got black on our plate already. So let's do some of that. And I'm going to use a different brush here. All right, so I've got, this is my mama brush. She is a half inch flat. I'm going to take a little bit of that black. Let's mix that in with our orange. This will give us some brown nearby. And of course, the more orange you have, the lighter the brown. So see, that was easy. That's our brown. We'll have a little bit of that nearby too. And I'm going to go ahead and scrape that off. Let's put Mama back into the water. Now we can add a little bit of some white to that, and that will give us a nice light brown. I'm just giving us nice little touches of some different light shades that we can go ahead and place into this mix later. So for the most part, I do want this to be just a very simple light gray, but I'll push into some of these different warmer shades here and push that through the mix. Now, my brush has a little bit of that warm color to begin with. I'm going to go ahead and rinse that out just a little bit. Dry it off here. All right, so let's start fresh with a lot of that really pretty light gray color. We're going to use a lot of this as our first coat here over the canvas. Let's go ahead and pull this up just a little bit. I want to make sure you can see there. And then I'll pull it back down when I get a little bit closer in. But on the edges, I'm going to go ahead and take this all the way across. And again, I do have a little bit of some water mix in my paint. This will make it more fluid and help it move, uh, move more smoothly right over the canvas. Now you can see how my uh, permanent marker is bleeding through. So that is awesome. That's exactly what we want. Again, we'll just take this all the way through. This is just going to be that really nice, pretty light coat. Now I'll do this as much as I can throughout the painting so that it just saves you so much time with your cutting work. We just continue this all the way through. However, with the truck, I'm going to be, I don't have to worry about being super perfect, but I'm going to try a little bit harder not to just do a complete wash right through because we're going to have to work into that red and I don't want to have it turn into a pink truck. Now, if you're having a pink truck, then then that would make it really easy on you. And then you could just go ahead and just wash right through. And you, you don't have to do any cutting work. You could just do it all the way through here. I'm going to make a little bit more of this gray. And let's just take this all the way across. All right. So again, I won't go through the entire truck. Now I'm still being a little bit sloppy around the edges just because I know this will set up and dry pretty quickly. And this is acrylic paint that we're using. So it does set up and dry in about sometimes five minutes, five to 10 minutes. And I'm applying some pretty firm pressure so that I know it will set up and dry quickly in that regard too. So just nice smooth coats all the way across. And then I said we were gonna use a little bit of warmth running through here too. So this is what I mixed up, er, mixed up earlier with that little bit of primary yellow and that white. So let's go ahead and just drag that through in the top and that will give a nice little creamy, tint to it. We'll just take this all the way across. And now a little bit of brown in there too. So just barely touch that brown. You can see how small that is. And my paint is still very wet up here at the top. So I get a nice soft blend in there. And as I drag that through, it just kind of looks like that old weathered wood because we've got that 
look, kind of looks like a little bit of that shiplap happening here in the background. So again, this is that brown that we mixed up. So I'm going to pull that through in a horizontal stroke, just a little touch of it. And if you're not a fan of the warmer tones, and of course it's really easy just to keep it very neutral and keep it more of that really just nice light gray happening there, that's okay too. You can do that as well. You can see how very, very cautious with how much brown I put in there because you can see how it really just quickly changes it. Very overpowering. So just be really light handed with that. Just use a little bit. All right. So this part of the canvas down here at the bottom still needs a little bit more of a total wash of that white and that little bit of gray to begin with because it's still dry here at the base. So I'm going to go ahead and push all this light gray all the way through. And I'll lift off pressure as I get close to that truck so that we don't have a lot of that white running through the shape of the truck. We're going to go ahead and try to avoid that just a little bit. That'll help us out later. A little bit more white right over the top there. Let's grab a little bit more of that cream that we mixed up. Kind of push that through. And again, we're just keeping this as nice horizontal strokes all the way across. I'm going to grab a little bit more of that brown. Tiny little touch of that. That paint's still nice and wet, so it just pulls right through and lightens it up. Just looks like old weathered wood there. Let's grab a little bit more white and then a little bit more of that brown. All right, so that is looking really good. Okay, so my next step is going to be to go ahead and do the roses because I do have a little bit of some of that white wash coming in over the top of the truck and I need that to have some setup and dry time so that it doesn't interrupt the red that I'm going to be placing into there. And by the way, you can make your truck any color that you want. We'll be doing red today for Valentine's Day. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and start with the roses now though. So I'm going to be using the Mama brush and then probably also my little buddy brush too for some of that. So let's see here. I am going to be mixing up some beautiful red and Primary magenta, which will give me a nice pink color. Let's see, I'm going to put this to the side. Let's grab another plate. Switch that out. All right, so this is some cadmium red. Let's start with like a little pea size amount there. And then let's do some primary magenta. I'll give you a visual so you can see where I'm at. There it is. And let's grab a white over here. And let's mix those two together. That gives us a cool red. Now I'm going to add a little bit of white now too. So that'll lighten that right up. And some pink undertones there. Let's go ahead and move our arm down a little bit. Get a closer look. There we go. Let's grab a little bit more white. Let's do a nice pale. Let me grab this little cord here. I don't think y'all can see that, but there we go. All right, so light pink happening here in our rows. Now, to begin with, our roses look like big lumpy circles. And we'll do this as an undercoat in all of these shades here. And it's okay to grab a little bit more white, make it really light, because we're gonna be coming back in with some darker tones over the top. So again, just big lumpy circles here for our little roses. 
And we've got a little bit of a peekaboo of a side rose happening. Here's gonna lay the brush on the side and then push that down into that shape. All right, so I've got all of our roses now. All right, so I'm gonna change up my technique just a little bit today since I'm making some different roses. I've got a little bit more of some line work happening here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add just a little bit more of that darker shade. This is my little bit brush. And I'm gonna go ahead and push into that darker shade here. And while the paint's still wet, I'm gonna push that into those shapes that you can see in your line work. Little comma right in the center and just kind of lift off with a light hand. Okay, a little comma right in the center. And then pushing around that darkest, that darkest shade there in almost what looks like little parentheses or half circles. A little comma, lift off with a light hand, and then little tiny touches of those little half circle shapes. All right, now I'm gonna rinse out and we're going to come back in with some white. All right, so clean brush. This is our little bit brush, which is really just a round tack on brush. I'm gonna come into that white paint now and do just an echo of that same stroke that we did before with our little half circles. And we definitely get a nice soft blend happening between those two shades. Do a little push into that little section. So again, it kind of feels like you're making what looks like little half circles. And you're getting that soft blend and with that darkest shade there, just kind of push that all the way around. And if you happen to add too much and you lose your shadows, you can always come back in with like a little touch of that darkest shade right over the top. But I wanna maintain that little bit of shadow right in the center of the rose. And then just make a nice little light touch of this white, just right on top there. And there are roses and they're done. They're so pretty. All right, so next up, let's go ahead and do, we've got this pink all loaded up. So I wanna go ahead and place this into the little heart here. So I'm gonna hold the brush just like you'd hold a pencil and go ahead and work into that shape. Real simple little heart shape. Now, initially, when you hold the brush more like a pencil, it'll kind of dig into the paint a little bit and you'll get some transparency. So as you go back in, you want to feather out those brush strokes and give a nice full coat right over the top. So I'm going to be turning my brush all the way over to the side, which is parallel to the canvas. So that'll help you get a nice finishing coat over the top and it also helps you feather out those brush strokes. There it is, very pretty. And let's see here. I think that's it for my pink because yeah, I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna do a lot of that, that black work with the courtly check here, black stripe here and then also um, just solid red right in through here. All right, so now let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and mix up a little bit of some green. And let's just do it right off to the side here on this plate. So in our paint kit here, we have some bright yellow green some cadmium green, and then also some viridian. All right, so viridian is so pretty. This is one of my most favorites here. Let's go ahead and do just a little bit, like a little pea size amount. And then let's go ahead and grab some 
cadmium green. And then some bright yellow green. And then we'll also make sure we've got some titanium white nearby too. But that's what it looks like to start with. About three pea size amounts there. I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit more white off to the side. Okay, always good to have a little bit extra. All right, so to begin with here, we've got our little bit brush, which again is just a round Taclon brush. And let me show you what it looks like to have a little bit of our white mixed in with our Viridian. See how pretty that is? That is just a really gorgeous, like a light teal. And then of course you can go more for a traditional green by adding in that cadmium green and then that bright yellow green. And there's still a little bit of white in there too. So some of these in here, this is just going to be a really pretty green that I'll add into this little section here. And the shape of it feels a lot like making the letter B just a little bit of a curve and then out to a point. And then to get that nice finishing touch, of course, remember to go ahead and lay that brush more over to the side, flat side of the brush. And then let's go ahead and do this other one. We've got a few more of these. Some of these little shapes that look a lot like feathers, or I'm sorry, not feathers, leaves are actually feathers. So like over here, we've got a little bit of a feather coming in, but these are leaves over here. But of course, if you wanna change that up and have more feathers, you certainly can. And I've got a little bit of a line coming in with this leaf. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring back in that Viridian to where it brings in a little bit of a darker shade right over the top. And what else is pretty too, if you're not a fan of the green, you can also just do more of this really pretty, kind of like a turquoise look can do a lot more of that too because you don't have to be traditional with your green you can make it more of that turquoise too so let's do another shape right in through there let's do a little push into that and a little bit of texture and then we have a few more of these coming out to the side in here So a little point, and then again, it just feels a lot like a little curvy V shape that comes into these roses. And I'll do a little bit of a flat push and then drag it out right over the top. to a point and then pull that back in. Yeah, let's make this one. Let's see, actually, let's do that one lavender. I'm gonna come back in with some lavender feathers here. So initially this one will be green, just making a few little decisions here. And you're welcome to do the same. You can change it up and kind of do your own thing. Get a little bit of white, titanium white and the Viridian. All right, so now our next move is to go ahead and work in some really pretty violet too. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse out my little bit brush here, dry that off, and then let's go ahead and grab some violet. And then we'll have our white nearby too. That's definitely going to be important. Our violet looks very dark to begin with. All right, so let's do some white and a little bit of that violet. Look how 
pretty that is. All right, so this is what's going to come into our little feathers. All right, so here we go. We've got a nice feather happening here. And we'll take that all the way out to a, just that round edge and then feather that in. And I kept some of that purple nearby too, so I can go ahead and just dip right into that. And we'll do that little line that we saw right there in the center. And we get a nice soft fade into that lighter lavender color. Since it's still wet, it gets a nice blend. And then I'll just go ahead and do some diagonal lines just right here over the top. We'll go right around the edge here with a little bit more of that little soft touch of just purple right over the top. Let's do a few more of those diagonal lines on the other side. And then we'll do a few more of these little violet pushes of paint just up and out of this little bouquet here. So I kind of just do a little push and then lift off with a light hand. There's a little bit of white in here too with our violet, gives it a little bit of texture, changes it up a little bit as you go. And then I have a little bit more of that really pretty little violet right in through here. Okay, it's looking good. All right. So next up here, I have a little bit of some fun cloud cover happening. I wanna go ahead and work that in up here at the top. So I've got my little buddy brush and these clouds are definitely optional too. So not everybody uh, wants this detail in here. You can just keep it more of like a very simple uh, ship lap in the background. But if you do like this little touch of the clouds happening, you're going to go ahead and include that in here just in case it's a nice little option. So I'm pushing in a little bit of this white to begin with, kind of feathering that in here. Just a little outline. And then while the paint is still wet, I'm going to go ahead and take my little bit brush and a little tiny touch of that darkest red there. And I'll do a soft little touch right into that white. And then let's add a little touch of that violet too. So a tiny little touch of that. And because we've got that wet white paint, we're getting a nice soft blend in there. And then to soften it up even more, I can always come back in with just a little bit more of that white. Just you know, softly overlap right over the top. Seeing that definitely softens that out. Just a nice soft blend there. And I'm coming into that purple, so I'm gonna keep that in a pure state. So I, go, I went ahead and rinsed off my brush. I'm gonna go into a little bit more of the pure white and then do a nice soft overlay right over the top. So I get another little soft blend right over the top of that violet. Just softens it up a little bit. All right, then we have a few more little clouds over here. So I've got my little buddy brush. It is just a quarter inch tack on brush. And I'll be working in just a little bit of this, just pure white right over the top. 
Just a fun little childlike abstracted cloud that's happening. And a little bit more white here. I'm definitely trying to soften it out and fade it out as I get close to the lettering. Again, just a little bit more white here. a nice soft white light coming around it. And then let's feather out those brush strokes a little bit, feather it into the entire shape there. All right, and the paint's still wet, so we're going to go ahead and go in with our little bit brush and then a little bit of that purple. I'll go ahead and start with that. And then let's do a little bit more of that red too. Again, still using my little bit brush. Let's go back in with that purple in here. And then we got one more little delicate look there. So now I need to go ahead and soften it up a little bit, get my nice soft blend. So I'm going to take a clean little bit brush, a little bit more of that white, just pure white. And now we're going to overlap right over the top and we get that nice soft blend there. That's looking really pretty. And I'm rinsing out because I need a clean brush again and I'll go right back into the pure white and then we'll touch up this little bit of red right over the top. And then let's do some light feathering with our white and a little bit more texture into the middle. Again, this is just a little bit of white. I might even have a little bit of some residual pink on there too, and that's okay. Just kind of feathering that all the way around into a really pretty little cloud shape here. All right, so there we have it, our really cute little clouds happening in the background. And we're getting really close to doing our red now. All right, so let's go ahead and get a little bit more of that going on. So we've got our cadmium red. Let's do a nice big dollop of that. And I still have a little hint of my primary magenta nearby. So you can add a little bit of that too to help cool it off if you want. All right, so here we go. Let's go ahead and mix these together. And then you can add a little bit of some water to this too to help make it a little bit more fluid over the surface. And then this heart here, I'm gonna go ahead and paint all of this in with the solid color of the red. So we definitely need our little bit brush to get around those curves. So very helpful for that. And I am adding a little bit of water just so it, for me, it stays a little bit transparent so I can not lose the trace that I did initially for my letters there. And 
And then as I get into this bigger shape, let's go ahead and switch to a bigger brush. Otherwise, we're going to see a lot of brush strokes happening with that smaller brush. So we're going to go ahead and use our mama brush to go ahead and smooth this out and work this into this really big shape here. All right, nice feathering strokes. Basically just hold the brush more over to the side. And I don't want to forget about this little guy. I'm going to go ahead and place him into the water and come back and get him a little bit later. All right, so again, we're using the Mama brush still. This is a pretty big surface area to work into. And Mama is a half inch Taclon brush. So we'll go ahead and work into this entire shape. And then let's add a little bit of water here to it. And as we get around the edges, we can also switch it up a little bit and you can hold the brush, you know, more like a pencil. So it gives you a nice thin line edge, gives you a little bit more control as you're working in around this shape here. And then you can see how I'm getting a little bit of some transparency happening. The brush kind of digs in. That's okay for this first coat because we're definitely a little bit more concerned about getting into the space and into those smaller sections. But when you're working in for your second coat, you can go ahead and hold that brush more over to the side. So just hold it parallel to the canvas. And then just work that in. And try to extend the length of the brush as much as you can for as long as you can. It just helps keep that brush stroke going. And if you happen to go over your tire in the center, not really a big deal because that's going to be black. And so it'll easily cover up over that. So you don't have to be just really precise when you come in around that tire. So I'm actually going to be a little bit slap, you know, just really kind of sloppy with it too. So I don't have to worry that much about it. Because the main goal is to relax and have a good time. And if you're just super uptight about being too precise, then you have a tendency to get a little bit stressed out. So that's why we love the permanent marker. It's definitely our friend and it helps us, helps us relax a little bit. These designs are definitely for beginners and they're made for you to learn how to relax and not think about too much. All right, so just kind of lightly feather that out. Now, just as soon as I said that, when you do get around your leaves, you might want to care a little bit. Now you want to <laughs> actually, let's try to be a little bit more precise when we get around that, because that becomes a little bit more challenging to come back in and create a correction. So I will try to be more careful around those. I may have to switch brushes there too, because that's getting a little bit tiny in there. But I'm going to use my mama brush as much as I can. And that looks like I'm gonna have to switch over to my little buddy and my little bit pretty quick. This is all getting a little bit tiny. All right. That's about all I can do. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to, so here's little buddy, little quarter inch Taclon flat brush. And let's go ahead and work into these small areas. And to help feather out those brush strokes, I always try to hold the brush more over to the side. It is a little bit of an awkward feeling, but that awkward feeling helps your hand become a little bit more gentle. And so you're not applying as much pressure and it allows more paint to actually rest right on the surface.
All right, so I'm kind of switching back and forth here between line work, so holding it more like a pencil, and then over to the side to help fill that in and feather out those strokes. A little bit more to do up here at the top. And it's definitely understandable to feel like you need to go ahead and use a little bit for some of this. This is a really tiny area. So let me show you this last part with a little bit brush. So I'm using a little bit, which is just a round Taclon brush. And I go ahead and push into this cadmium red. We also had a little bit of that primary magenta nearby. A nice even mix, do a little twist into it so that it rotates it into a nice fine point. And then that will help you get into those smaller areas. And then I need to feather this out. So I'm going to definitely change how I hold the brush. So more over to the side. Light feathering out. So that's looking really good. And I'm going to go ahead and come back in with the Mama brush. And we're going to get a nice finishing coat there right over the top. So we've got our detail work done. And now it's time for a little bit of that feathering out. And remember, you can always come back in and do second, third coats too. Even with the smaller brushes as well. And I'm definitely loving how all of the line work is bleeding through. That will make it so much easier on you as a beginner. See, up in here, it probably scared you a little bit at first because you probably thought, if you're working at home, especially too, you think, oh my goodness, I'm losing the number four, but it peaks back out. So that is good. All right, so let's see. Let's go ahead and work in, I think what I'm up to now. I always try to save the black till the very end. So next let's do some gray. So I've got, let's go back to my plate that I had in the very beginning. So I've got some white and some titanium white and some Mars black. This is my little bit brush, just a round Taclon brush. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of twirl that into that light gray there. Actually, it's kind of a medium gray. You can make it light gray if you want, just add more white. And then we're going to just finish out this little circle here in the very center. This is our wheel. And so a little bit definitely helps us get into that shape. And then we're almost at the point where we've got just black detail left. So that's good news. Right, so I've got that rinsed out. You always want to make sure you rinse off your brushes pretty quickly because acrylic paint does set up and dry pretty quickly, like five to 10 minutes. And so if your brushes dry, then they become little sticks instead of brushes. And that's not fun. So, all right. So here we go, nice clean brush. Let's go ahead and come into a little bit of our black. Let me check that out. It looks like I had a little 
fuzzy on the end, maybe not. I'm adding a little bit of water to the paint as well. It, yeah, to the paint as well. So that basically just helps it become, again, a little bit more fluid. Yeah, I'm still concerned about that little fuzzy, but I think we're okay. Well, it'll come get me here in a minute. <laughs> so that's the problem with those little guys is that you hit your canvas with it and they make a, a lasting impression. They look really small, like they're not going to do any damage. And then they can be, um, hmm, we'll just say they're interesting. Because <laughs> I always say there are no mistakes, only possibilities, but they definitely give you some possibilities to contend with. All right, so I think we're okay. I don't know what happened to it. So, but that little bit of water into the black definitely helps it be more fluid. It takes away those little white peekaboos that show through. And so you can just flow right into the surface area of your canvas. And we'll take this all the way around here. It's like a nice little donut shape, basically. And you can apply a little bit of some firm pressure to the brush to help the bristles kind of spread out and give a thicker stroke into that area. And the reverse is true too, if you want your brush stroke to be extremely tiny then of course have a very gentle hand and then that will just allow the very tip of the brush to hit the surface of the canvas. Right, so that's looking good. This is our tire. And it just looks like a little flat donut. Saying that out loud made me think of uh, little Debbie's. I haven't had one of those in a really long time. Those are quite wonderful. All right, just a little bit more black here for that lovely little donut shape around. The wheel, this is our tire. Yeah, my stomach just growled too, so really loudly. So apparently everything is becoming very food focused <laughs> at this point. So, yeah. So these are like donuts to me right now. That's all I can think about. Very delicate hand now. I'm gonna add a little bit more water because the paint is starting to give me a little bit of some resistance. So I add a little bit of water and then that helps it just kind of flow right into that little space there. All right, so we'll let that set up and dry a little bit. And then I'm going to work in the details of the truck that come in right over the top. That's just peeking right through. And then we have this fun little scrolling pattern right here in the center. This is definitely an area where I have some water mixed into the paint to help it, you know, flow smoothly. But also I use a really delicate light hand, just barely touching the canvas so that my brush stroke stays very tiny and thin. So I feel like I just barely touched the canvas on this. And then the other little tip is as you twist into the paint, I basically twist it between my fingertips and that'll rotate it out to a nice fine point.
We have just tiny little loops up here at the top. Make a little loop and come down to a little fine point there. A little curly hues. That's well, looking good. These little lines represent that pickup bed area. And then this is our little door handle here. I'll go ahead and do a light outline around the track here, just reinforcing that line that's peeking through underneath. This just helps clean that up a little bit too. Gives a nice boundary to the red. Definitely need a little bit brush for these little tiny curves in here. I need to reload a little bit with more of a mix of the water in with the black. And then let's remember our nice little twist there into that paint. Really delicate hand. Again, it just feels like you're barely touching the canvas. Okay, that's looking good. All right, so now we need to go ahead and work in our lettering. Now, here's another fun uh, tip, working at home, you can certainly just use your permanent marker over the top, especially here's the, the cautionary tale. Make sure that your paint is absolutely dry because if your paint is wet and you come in with your permanent marker, then it will kill the marker instantly. Uh, markers don't like wet paint. And that's very sad. So we don't want that to happen. So just make sure your paint's all dry and you'll be all set and you can actually do all of this work with just your permanent marker instead of the paint. But I'm gonna go ahead and work with my little bit brush and just use a really delicate hand and just follow up right over the top. And another uh, stabilizing trick too is to uh, rest the weight of your hand on your pinky and that helps stabilize your hand. And as I reload the brush, I do make sure that I keep enough of just a little tiny touch of water into that black. And then I always twist it back out so I get a nice fine point. Yeah, that little bit of water is really helping Really just flows easily into that space in here. With that, it, you'll see a difference. It will just start to look, it'll resist a lot and kind of dry brush over the top of the canvas. So you'll know if you need to add just a little bit more. But you don't want too much. That's why I always kind of squeegee a little bit of out with the uh, twist because you'll end up with a little puddle on your canvas and you don't want that either. So you have to be a little bit careful. It is pretty safe though if your canvas is placed in this flat position. If you have it up on an easel, uh, you do have to be very careful of water run. So that's another little mention too with caution. And now let me talk about these little loops with the letters too. You wanna to be really careful with loops in your letters. Always make sure you take the black around the line and not inside the line or you'll eliminate that negative space in there. And that definitely changes the shape of the letter and sometimes makes it unrecognizable. So you do wanna be careful with that too. Now we're doing our little four. Definitely gonna be careful of that negative space in the center. Make sure I go around it and not inside.
Got another E here. So same thing here. Got to be really, really careful of that little loop. Basically, just go around it. So it just takes a lot of patience here to work all this in. And remember, don't let this part intimidate you because it can definitely be done with your permanent marker. It's very easy for beginners and you can just go right in over the top and nobody will ever know because you really, you can't tell on the canvas. It'll just look like really delicate paintwork. Get another mix going, a little bit more water, a little bit more black. Twist that out. Nice fine point. Always want to make sure you twist it out into a nice fine point. Have another loop coming up here. So we definitely want to avoid that negative space. Another one right in here. All right, so we've got the pull down and then up. Ah, it's kind of a relief when you get that part done. <laughs> so, all right, so now we've got some patterned hearts happening here. And you can keep these simple if you want and just do red again. I did go ahead and introduce some pattern because these patterns are definitely trending right now. They have been for a while. They're basically just a really great classic. It's interesting. We've been watching Mad Men, and, which I believe is set back in the 50s, and it's amazing how much of the buffalo check and the courtly check and the stripes that you see in all the menswear. It's just a nice classic pattern. All right, so we're going to work in some black stripes, real classic black stripe here. Oh, and I didn't show you this earlier. I needed to. You can actually let your paint dry and work this in over the top, too. Where is it? I have a. This is becoming so helpful. This is a coffee stirrer, wooden coffee stirrer, and they're really inexpensive. You can get hundreds of them for just next to nothing, like a dollar. These are great for making really tiny little courtly checks or stripes patterns into designs. So that's actually what I use to come back in and do that. And let's go ahead and outline this little heart here. And the courtly check is much easier to navigate with the pattern. Sometimes I think the buffalo plaid really throws people off because you've got three colors to work out. You've got your gray and your black and your white. But with this, you're just alternating between the black and the white. So now we've got a little bit of this square happening. So I'm going to go ahead and shift gears a little bit now and move to a little buddy brush. Let's see. All right, so here we go. Here's the little buddy, a quarter inch flat brush. And I'm gonna go ahead and push into that back and forth and then just make little tiny squares here. But first I'm going to go ahead and do my line work. Gives me a nice boundary. that through. 
And you can do this with a ruler too, if you want, or like I said, that little coffee stirrer, I think is a great tool, but your permanent marker really helps. And then that little coffee stirrer really helps give you a nice little line right in there. Just little tiny touches in here. Okay. Yay, that looks good. And we're going to go ahead and let that lighter color work for us. But if you want, you can certainly come back in. And I would even recommend using your little bit brush for this, but you can work in just little tiny sections of that white. That's definitely an overachiever move, but you can certainly do that and just work that into those little sections in there. And then I see a few little areas. I'm going to go ahead and come right back in with a clean little bit brush. Do a nice little rotation into that black paint. Let's gather a little bit more of that water. So we have a nice smooth line and then I'll go ahead and do another little line right around the edge. I'm trying to think if I've got everything done now. I may be completely finished. We'll see. Oh, I, I may want to do, well, no, I'm not going to. I was thinking about outlining that heart, but I think I like that just the way it is. All right. So, nope, I've got some more work to do on my hearts. And then I've also got to reinforce the shiplap happening. All right. So this is a fun little thing we can do with our hearts here. So it's just basically some fun accent colors that come in over the top. All right, so I'm going to be using my little bit brush again and a little bit of white and that Viridian color. Let's mix that together. And then I'm going to make just another little heart right in the center. Just a little line of it. Okay, and then let's use some of my primary yellow. That's really light. I've got a little bit of that over here to the side. A little bit brush. It's a nice contrast. And then next up, we've got I'm going to add a little bit more primary yellow over here by my pink. And let's do some orange too. I'll make sure I've got some of that. So if it does mix a little bit, I've got some nice coral happening. But I'm basically going to do like little tiny sun rays going around these hearts. So I had a little bit of primary yellow on here. Now I've got some orange and I've got all this pink nearby. So probably go to a little bit of a coral color. Let's do a little twist in there. And then I'll just make really fun little dashes that basically come out. It gets, if the belly of the brush gets a little bit too thick, of course, you can come back in and do another little twist there. So I start a little thicker, closer to the heart, and then I just kind of pull out, and then when I do that, it just kind of lifts off with a light hand. Looking good. I'm going to do one more firm outline around the heart now with our pink here. Let's 
grab a little more of that red. Twist that out, nice fine point. And then let's just reinforce that a little bit. And a little bit more red to that too. So I've got a nice soft blend in there. It's making that heart pop right back out to the front again. You know, a little bit more of that red with the white. And we're just outlining that heart one more time. So it makes it pop right back out to the front. Yeah, that's looking a lot better. Okay, good deal. Okay, so we've got a lot more of our fun detail happening on our hearts. And now we need to accentuate the shiplap that's happening here in the background, which is really simple. We do this with our mama brush and a little bit of that dark charcoal. So I'm gonna go ahead and do some firm pressure into the black and then the white and just push back and forth. And you wanna check on the end of the brush, make sure it's nice and thin we have a nice thin line here and then I make sure that my hand is very delicate and I just barely touch the canvas because I want a nice thin line it basically just looks like a nice sketch of a line that goes right over the top and it doesn't have to connect fully you can see how it's just a light sketch that doesn't go all the way through a little bit of separation there and then that's it. And now I think I'm actually done. Yeah. Yay. All right. So we are finished painting. All there is left to do now is just to sign your masterpiece. And this is all dry here, so we can actually do that. So i am just use my permanent marker here. Ta-da! All good. All right. Well, Happy New Year, y'all. Thank you so much for joining me today. I had so much fun painting with y'all. Remember to eat your black eyed peas so that we can have lots of good luck for next year. And y'all have a beautiful rest of the day, and I will see you soon. Toodles! <laughs>